The National Weather Service really depends on Skywarn for storm spotting. Skywarn is important because the Weather Service means that ground truth information. We say first, spot second. Hi, I'm Jim N4BFR from Ham Radio Prep. We're talking emergency communications, and one of those groups is Skywarn, and I'm here with... Lewis Long. I'm one of the section coordinators for the Dayton Skywarn. The Skywarn program here in the area from the National Weather Service office in Wilmington. Our coverage area is from Mercer and Arglaze County to the north, down through here in Greene County, Montgomery, Preble. And we also have three counties in East Central Indiana, uh, Fayette Union and Wayne. So about 6,500 square miles where the ground truth information. So if you're ever watching your local news and you hear that storm spotter, Skywarn Amateur Radio has reported a tornado on the ground, wall clouds forming, flash floods, whatever. It's the spotters in the amateur radio community that have seen that and that have reported that to the National Weather Service office through the various means, whether it's amateur radio or direct phone calls. Now, this is not necessarily a twister kind of thing where they're out with big trucks and those kind of things, right? It's something Correct. it's just a ham in a car. Correct. We are storm spotters, not storm chasers. And great distinction. And we greatly emphasize that throughout the trainings the weather service does as well safety is stressed in the storm spotting appropriate locations the best place to see things make sure you have your safe area if you're at home and you're spotting and something happens to happen very quickly you you know, you know where to go to be safe. And be safe first, spot second. Correct. Sounds sounds like correct. A, if I wanted to get involved with Skywarn, it's really going to be two parts. It's going to be getting involved in ham radio and get my ham radio license if I choose to communicate that way. Correct. And then getting Skywarn training. So what kind of training would, would I get if I, if I came to see you guys? So there is an online basic training from Comet Met Ed website. Uh -huh. um, it's about hour to two hour video and question and answer. What's preferred is you should go to your local weather services website and then each weather service office has a little Skywarn section of it. Um, click on the Skywarn section and it's not just for the amateur radio, it's just it's Skywarn in general for everyone and it will tell you about the different trainings, the different publications they have. So here, um, we are more severe thunderstorm, tornado, flash flood, and cut somewhere in, say, Arizona, the Tucson office. Mm -hmm. The Skywarn program may be a little different because they tend to get more flash floods, yeah. but only in a shorter space of time than the rest of the time. It's down, or, like, that's down in weather. Florida or in Louisiana, it might be a hurricane, hurricane emphasis. Right? Correct. So go to your local office and click on the Skywarn link. There should be a link for the upcoming trainings. Most of the trainings are now over for the year. Mm -hmm. There may be a few in the fall, and there may be trainings late in the fall for severe winter weather spotting. Oh, but yeah. for, for the most part, the trainings occur from January to say mid to late April. All depends on the area you're in. Again, that's exactly. A, um, as somebody who wants to get involved in Skywarn and they've already got their ham radio license, or they're they're going to be a new ham and they they want to they sure. want to get involved with that. What kind of recommendations do you have for somebody like that? Um, a good HT that's a dual band for the two meter and the four forties. Okay. Um, it just all depends on, again, your location the and the repeaters in your area. We work off of two different two meter repeaters for our section, but a lot of our counties will also use 440 for their local net. Ah, uh, great. Okay. So, uh, for example, one of our section repeaters is north in Shelby County, and we use a two meter to communicate for our counties up there but Shelby County itself 
works off of a 440 machine because we have their primary cat for their section. So um, what I would suggest doing is your go to the office website, check to see what Skywarn information is there for the amateur radio. If they have amateur radio involvement, that will be there. Find your county, it should show your frequency or at least give you an idea as to who kind of oversees that area and then make contact with them either over the radio or, or by email through their websites if they have one and find out more information about what frequencies are used. Um, some of the groups in the area do a weekly net or a monthly net sort of check in, make sure everything's going okay. So find out what goes on in your area and become involved. Track how your gear works and get some practice on operating it when it comes time. So you're not going out for the first time and exactly. going, oh wait, is my turn just hawk yet? And not yep. really know what's gonna happen, right? Yep. I think that's a great idea for, yep. for people to practice. Do you guys do link repeaters up here? Is that a common Skyward thing? Here, not so much. There is a link repeater system that we don't use, but it's, uh, it's our primary district Aries repeater had it and they have multiple received sites from the Indiana state line all the way to Columbus. Yeah. That's it's something we may look into, but at the moment, our primary one is, is, um, has some really, really good coverage. Um, it can cover almost our entire 15 County area here with the Dayton group. Oh, that's great. Um, but. The, not quite, so that's why we still have that that other one. And so. that's another thing that's helpful to know and get out of practice, right? Hey, can I hit this repeater from three counties over? What do I need? Do I need a bigger antenna? Or exactly. Power? You know, most handhelds with the rubber duck are, are good for your local county. If you have a mobile unit and you go out, I will go out and I will try to hit certain repeaters. For instance, I've in Richmond, Indiana, I've been able to hit the primary repeater here on a mobile unit, low power. But if I go 10 miles up the road, I can't hit it. It's just where I happen to be in the county and the terrain. So that's, that's something else that a new person might want to do is if they do have a mobile unit and they're out and about, program in those different county frequencies and you know see if you can hit them on the various power strengths that your radio has. Uh, we are pretty much 100% FM. Um, we don't have the ability to receive any digital communications where we work from. The National Weather Service does not have that ability either. Um, there's a group of hams that goes into the local office when we're alerted that we're needed and it's strictly voice. So potentially I could either be a storm chaser or I'm sorry, a, a storm spot, storm spotter, or I could work at the weather service office and take in reports and, and exchange them. That's another uh, position in Skyward. Right. Um, each office, like I said, has their own amateur radio group with the Skywarn. Um, so they have a group of amateurs that go in. We have four different sections here. So Dayton, Cincinnati, West Union, and Columbus. So we're alerted that the different sections will need to go in. So our operators go into our work area and then we alert our counties that we've been activated. We need you guys. If I'm listening to the 160 megahertz broadcast that the National Weather Service right. does, the weather sometimes radio. you leave the weather radio, you leave it here and there. Skywar activation is potential or Skywar activation Correct. not required. So Correct. give you a heads up a little bit on what right. I'm thinking this battery will be. That's part of the hazardous weather outlook. And um, that's something that I check religiously every morning. Um, here in the Dayton area at the Wilmington office, they tend to have that out by 6 a.m. So. Uh, when I get up and check the email and, and get things together to post on our Facebook page for Dayton Skywarn, um, that's something that I do as opposed to hazardous weather outlook. And it tells you that based on what we're seeing and, what, and what's potential, we may or may not need you today. Uh, we, activation is likely later this afternoon or hazardous weather is not expected at this time so that's a handy little little tip even if you're not a skywarn active person yep yep find out when the classes are going to be right attend the classes in person at a minimum 
if if you can do it online, that's that's good. But the in person training is a lot better. Um, you'll you'll get more information. They show you more about what the role of the spotter is and what specifically they're looking for. So that's important. Yes, knowing what they want to hear back. Right? They can tell by the radar if it's raining. They Correct. can't tell if it's pea size scale or golf ball exactly. size scale. Exactly. That's the kind of thing that they want. Exactly. To exactly. They can give us an estimate. It looks like it's going to be this, but that ground truth that I referenced earlier. That's what they're looking for from the spotters in the amateur radio. Ground, ground truth is a great term for Skyward. Getting involved in Skyward is important because the weather service means that ground truth information. They, the radar is only so good. It can see that there's potential for rotation, but you as the spotter on the ground looking up and saying, yes, I'm seeing that wall cloud. There is rotation. I'm seeing a funnel cloud forming. That is the impetus that they need to get that warning out quicker than what they may not if they're just relying on what the radar is showing. The radar may not always be correct, but what you are seeing is the ground truth information that they need to issue that warning and fulfill their mission of protecting the public. Thank you very exactly. much. I appreciate talking to you today. Thank Have you. a great afternoon. You too.